for the introduction, Emma. Dear professors, dear colleagues, and dear friends, thank you for coming to my PhD defense. First of all, let me introduce what limit angle tomography is. Cone beam CT is a widely used medical imaging technology. It reconstructs a 3D volume which provides cross-sectional information of an imaged patient. In clinical applications, typically an angiographic CM system is used to acquire 3D images for planning, guiding, and also monitoring of interventional therapies. In order to do 3D reconstruction, the source and the detector need to rotate at least 180 degrees plus a cone angle as a short scan, as displayed in this video. Here, the source and the detector rotate like, like a propeller, so this rotation mode is called the propeller mode. And uh, these are the acquired projections at uh, different angular positions. Note that there is no limited angle problem here in this video. However, in practice, the rotation might be restricted by some external obstacles. For example, an extra surgical device near the patient bed. Then the problem of limited angle tomography arises. There are two rotation modes in CM devices. The other one is called orbital mode, where the source and the detector rotate along the arc of, of the CM. For some systems, the arc length is decided to be small so that there is more opening space for surgical operations. For example, the Siemens multipurpose system, it can rotate 150 degrees only. If we want to use such a system for 3D image reconstruction, then the problem of limited angle tomography also arises. So image reconstruction from data acquired in an insufficient angular range is called limited angle tomography. In CT, filtered back projection is the standard image reconstruction technique. However, in limited angle tomography, due to missing data, so artifacts will occur. For example, this is a custom reference image, and this is its 160 degree FBP reconstruction with the trajectory from 10 degrees to 170 degrees. So here we can see the boundary is distorted and many edges are blurred and also there are many horizontal large streaks. The orientations of these streaks are highly dependent on the scan trajectory. For example, if we switch to this trajectory from 100 degrees to 260 degrees, then the streak orientations are almost vertical instead of horizontal. So this is called the trajectory dependency property of limited angle tomography. So here the task of my PhD project is to Im improve image quality for limited angle tomography using various approaches. The most intuitive one is to extrapolate missing data using, for example, some data consistency conditions. The next method is called compressed sensing, which can achieve better image quality for image reconstruction from insufficient data by using some sparsity regularization. And nowadays, machine learning has achieved overwhelming success in various fields, including CT reconstruction. For limited angle tomography, there are so many out, uh, state of the art methods out there. For example, the UNET methods, GANs, and the variational neural networks. Consistent with the trend, this trend, so all of my contributions to limited angle tomography also lie in these aspects. First, for consistency conditions, I have proposed to use the Helgonson Ludwig data consistency to restore missing data. And I have also applied the public uh, sketch bag algorithm based on some band limitation properties using data consistency conditions to restore missing data in parallel beam limited angle tomography. For compressed sensing, we have proposed a scale-based unisotropic total variation algorithm to reduce large streaks in limited angle tomography. And for machine learning, we have investigated traditional machine learning and also the robustness of deep learning. And we have also applied deep learning for real biology data in transmission X-ray microscopy. To improve deep learning, so we combined compressor sensing and machine learning and have proposed a data consistent artifact reduction method. 
It has also been applied to field of view extension and sparse view CT. Due to limited time in this talk, I will mainly focus on compressed sensing, machine learning and their combination, and show some example evaluation results. So first, compressed sensing. So in this part, I will introduce our scales based on isotropic total variation to reduce large scale streaks based on some scale-based approaches like Gaussian polymers. So in compressed sensing, a image reconstruction problem can be reformulated as follows. So we want to minimize the L1 norm of a transformed image with the constraint AF minus P. Its norm should be smaller than epsilon. Here, P is the vector of measured projection data, and A is the system matrix for the CT. And it, with its element AIJ is a contribution of GS image pixel to the eyes detector value. So here, this term is also called the data fidelity term. In iterative reconstruction, this is all typically optimized by simultaneous algebraic reconstruction technique. We call it SART for short. And here, the phi is a specifying transform like wavelet transform or gradient transform, since compressed sensing requires images to be sparse in a certain domain. So with such sparsity regularization, then a unique solution can be found for reconstruction insufficient data. Here, yeah, if we only use this data fidelity only, there are many solutions that So in work, we use the total variation regularization it can be used for image processing because medical images are specified in their gradient domain. For example, this is a shared program that mimics one slice of the human head, and this is the, its limited angle reconstruction. When we compute their gradients, then reference image there is only a few number of zero pixels, which from this blue histogram, where most pixel values are at zero. However, if images suffer from artifacts or noise, then there are much more non-zero pixels as seen here in this gradient image, which can also be seen from this, the other histogram. So total valuation is defined as the L1 norm of image gradient. So here D is the gradient transform operator, and the one is the L1 norm. So it is, is basically the sum of gradient magnitudes here, the sum with sum over different pixels along x and y direction. And the magnitude is computed using the L2 norm, which is basically this term, square root of the gradient in x and y directions. So the TV, TV value for the reference program phantom is about 3,000. However, it is as high as 8,400 for the noisy image. This implies that if we want to improve image quality for then we can choose to minimize its TV value. However, images pro processed by conventional TV methods may suffer from some undesirable effects. For example, sharp edges might, might be blurred and sharp uh, fine structures might be removed. So to enhance sparsity, this iteratively weighted total variation algorithm is proposed. We call it WTV for short. So WTV is basically the weighted sum of uh, image gradients. So here W is the weight. It is defined as the inverse of the image uh, gradient magnitude plus a small positive value x epsilon. And for this term, note that it is zero if this, this magnitude is zero. Otherwise, it is approximately one. So we can see it is the sum of zero or one. So fundamentally, WTV counts the non-zero gradients, so which is a good approximation of the L0 norm. So its advantage is that it can preserve sharp edges very well. Here I use an example with two 1D plots. One is a staircase, and the other is a sharp edge. So the regular TV value for the both plots are 10, because their intensity values vary from zero to 10. So the total variation is 10. However, for WTV, its value for this staircase is only five, since there are five steps, so basically five non-zero gradients, and it is only one for this sharp edge. So we can see WTV prefers sharp edges 
to these spare cases. That is why it can preserve <coughs> sharp edges very well. In our apl application, we have adapted the WTV for limited angle tomography. So we can see, compared with the SART reconstruction, so it can re reduce high frequency noise and the small scale streaks very well. However, compared with the reference image, then it is not able to reduce these large scales, uh, large scale streaks. It is not effective in reducing large scale streaks because of two limitations. First is that it is not convex. So it may found, find only local minima instead of a global optimal solution. The second is that it is scale limited. It is scale limited because it uses regular gradient detectors. Regular gradient detectors only use two neighboring pixels to compute the difference as a gradient like this. So here I also use some figures to illustrate this. So this is a regular gradient detector, and this is an image with large horizontal streaks. We can see when the detector is here, it can detect some variation. However, at this position, and also this position, it may regard these three pixel wide region as homogeneous regions. That's why it is not effective in large scale variation detection. Then what can we do to avoid this limitation? One simple solution is that we can use more pixels to, as a gradient detector along this vertical direction. Here we only use more pixels along this vertical direction because we have learned that streak orientations are highly dependent on the scan trajectory, and in our application, most streaks are horizontal. So it's not necessary to use more pixels along the horizontal direction. We only need to enforce homogeneous along this vertical direction to reduce large streaks. And here we use four pixels. We can also use eight pixels, 16 pixels to form a scale space to reduce different scale streaks. Based on this idea, we have proposed our first scale space on isotropic total variation. And alternatively, we can also downsample the image. When the image is downsampled, then large streaks become small scale streaks. Then even with the regular gradient detector, it can detect this variation now. So here we downsample the image with a factor of two. Then we can also choose to use a factor of four, eight, and so on, like a Gaussian pyramid. So based on this idea, we have proposed our second scale space on isotropic TV. Then here is the evaluation result. So yeah, with our proposed SSA TV, we can see these large streaks are reduced very well. This highlights the efficacy of our SSA TV. So while I was doing compressed sensing, machine learning has achieved compressed, uh, impressive results for limited angle tomography, even with large missing angular ranges. Deep learning is very promising, as we know. However, its robustness is still a concern for clinical applications. Therefore, in this part, we will investigate its robustness for the application to limited angle tomography. So the neural network we use here is the state-of-the-art unit. Compared with the original unit for segmentation, we have made several modifications. So first, we use the cellulopaded convolution to keep the image size. And nowadays, batch normalization is a standard technique for neural networks. And here for the upsampling, we use the resize and convolution to avoid checkboard artifacts. And since it's here the unit is a regression neural network, so the softmax function for segmentation is no longer used. And for training, we simply use the L2 loss function. So we evaluate the performance of the unit in a task-based study where we want to investigate whether the unit is, re is able to reconstruct a high, a high contrast leaching-like object. So we can see the object here in this zoomed in wing box. And we trained the unit with using 17 patients and one for validation and one for test. So this is one test slice, so which is reconstructed from 120 degrees. So when we use this image as the input of the unit, it reconstructs a very realistic image. So here the boundaries are restored very well, and most importantly, the high contrast lesion is there. So we can see deep learning is very promising. However, if we look at uh, these images in a narrow window, then we can see some 
Fan structures are not accurate. For example, some this hard ventricle and also some vertebra and especially this horizontal part of the rib compared with the reference image. So missing data cannot be restored entirely, even with deep learning. We have learned that the robustness of deep learning is affected by many factors, for example, insufficient training data, noise, and uh, adversarial perturbations. So adversarial perturbations are some small intentional perturbations that cause a neural network to make false predictions. We human eyes typically cannot notice their ex existence because they typically have very small magnitudes. So here, first, yeah, we investigate whether adversarial perturbations will exist in our application to limited angle tomography. So we train an adversarial perturbation using an image without this high contrast lesion. Then, so here is the input image without perturbation as we seen before. And here this is the image with our generated um, perturbation. We can hardly see their difference because the generated perturbation has very small magnitude. However, if we use this image as the input of the unit, then it reconstructs an image like this. The high contrast lesion entirely disappears. And even if we retrain the unit with some other data, then this lesion is still gone. So we can always generate some perturbation. Here is the perturbation we generated display, displayed in a narrow window. We can see it is structured. So fortunately, so it is still not clear that whether adversarial perturbations will exist in nature. So adversarial perturbations may be not a big problem for clinical applications since they may not exist in nature. Then what about noise? As we know that postal noise is inevitable in computed tomography. So here, that's why we investigate its influence. So this is the input image with postal noise. We can still uh, hardly see the noise pattern because the noise level is not so high. However, if we use this image as the input of the new net, then, yeah, oh, so first the unit is trained without postal noise, then it reconstructs an image like this. So here, the leasing entirely disappears, and the body outline sh shifts up to one centimeter. And if we retrain the unit with some postal noise, then it is able to reconstruct the lesion to some degree. However, this lesion is over smoothed, and the, um, the boundary is not uh, accurate. So here we can see deep learning is sensitive to noise. So here, in our application, the new net is used as a post-processing neural network. So such image-to-image -image prediction has no direct connections to measured data. Therefore, the deep learning reconstruction might be inconsistent to measure the data. Therefore, here in this part, I will introduce our data-consistent artifact reduction method as a hybrid reconstruction method to improve deep learning reconstruction. So here we want to combine deep learning with conventional methods. There are two ways to do, do so. One is that we can directly build neural networks based on non-operators, as we did in our TMI publication and also our Nature ma Machine Intelligence paper. And the second way is to use conventional methods to post-process deep learning reconstruction. So here, yeah, in our case, we want to use compressor sensing to post-process deep learning reconstruction. So here, as I mentioned, so our unit yeah, is a post-processing neural network. So here we use image to image prediction. That is why the deep learning reconstruction has no direct connections to measured data. That, that is why some incorrect structures will happen. So here we want to make or constrain our image to be data consistent. Then here, in limited angle tomography, we have a certain angular range of data measured, for example, 120 degrees. Then yeah, we denote the measured projections by PM. And with this measured data, then we have this data fidelity for the measured angular range. So AM times F minus PM is norm should be smaller than uh, parameter epsilon 1. So here the AM is the system matrix for the measured angular range. 
And as I mentioned, for image reconstruction, we need a short scan around, for example, 200 degrees for image reconstruction sciences. Angular range is still missing. Then, yeah, as we have already had the deep learning reconstruction, then we can use deep learning to provide prior information for the missing data. Then, yeah, we can simply estimate these unmeasured projections using forward projection of the deep learning reconstruction. So here, yeah, so AU is the system matrix for the unmeasured angular range. Then this unmeasured data can PU hat can be estimated simply by AU times FU net. Then with this estimation, then we have the data fidelity for the unmeasured angular range. Then yeah, AU times F minus PU hat should be smaller than the other yeah, parameter epsilon two. Then yeah, now we have the whole angular angular range data. Then if we directly use the FBP reconstruction, then since there is noise in the measured projections, and also due to discontinuous uh, intensity values at this transition area between the PU and the PM, then still artifacts and the noise might happen. Therefore, we propose to use WTV to further reduce noise and artifacts. Then here we have this overall objective function for our DECA method. So we want to minimize the WTV term of the image with the, these two separate uh, data fidelity terms. One is for the measured angular range and one for the missing angular range. Then, yeah, since we solve it in an iterative way, then we use the deep learning reconstruction as initialization to save computation. So here I will show some evaluation results in the noise-free case. This is the reference image, and this is the 120 degree FBP reconstruction. We can see the boundaries are, are severely distorted. And even with WTV, because it's a large missing angular range, then it is not able to restore this boundary, and also the bottom boundary. However, for the unit, it is able to reconstruct a very realistic image. Compared with the reference, these boundaries are restored very well. However, the areas indicated by the red arrows, they are incorrect. They are incorrect because the corresponding areas in the FBP reconstruction, which are used as the input of the unit, they have very low intensities. So that's, that's why the unit may regard this as some dark cavities, then some incorrect structures occur. So with our proposed DECA method, these areas are corrected, and also it achieves the smallest root mean square error. So here is the noise, uh, noisy case evaluation. In the reference image, in the region of the interest, we can see some small cavity structures. However, due to severe noise pattern, then yeah, the unit is not able to reconstruct uh, these cavity structures. And with our proposed DECA, these cavity structures are reconstructed to some degree. And also compared with the WTV, these boundaries are also reconstructed. We have also performed leave one out cross validation experiments. So in the noise free case, yeah, we can see for different patients, the performance of the unit or DECA varies. Uh, over, on, on average, so DECA has achieved a about 18% root mean square error improvement compared with the unit. And also in the noisy case, DECA has achieved around 27% root mean square error improvement, which is very significant. So here comes the summary. So in the compressor sensing, we have, you know, we have proposed a scale space on isotropic total variation to improve WTV to reduce different scale space, uh, different scale streaks. And in the machine learning part, we have yeah, investigated the robustness of deep learning. And here we can see, yeah, as you remember, so the lesion here is, is, uh, is missing because of the influence of noise. And here in the hybrid reconstruction, we have proposed a data consistent uh, artifact reduction method to improve deep learning in, rest in restoring some incorrect structures. 
And here comes the conclusion. So note that no matter which method you use, missing data cannot be restored entirely. And here for consistency conditions, so yeah, it is good for your post needs analysis, uh, analysis. However, it is only able to restore some uh, low frequency components yeah, if we use data consistency to restore missing data. And for compressed sensing, it is robust and it, is, it can generate good image quality for small missing angular ranges. However, it is computationally expensive and it cannot generate good image quality for large missing angular ranges. And for mas machine learning, it can generate very realistic images even for large missing angular ranges. And it is efficient for inference. So we know it's very computationally expensive for training the uh, neural network. However, it is very efficient for test. And it is not robust to many factors like noise, insufficient training data, and adversarial perturbations. And with our proposed hybrid method, we are combining compressor sensing and machine learning, then it is robust, and it can also generate good image qualities for large missing angular ranges. And it is also faster than compressed sensing only. So here, here concludes my talk. Thank you very much. And uh, any question is welcomed. Thank you.